welcome to the colourful and vibrant city of Bangkok. And we're here for the 2022 Total Energies BWF Thomas and Yuba Cup Finals. And it's all happening here at the Impact Arena in Nontabori in the northern suburbs of Bangkok. Well, 32 teams from 19 different nations from across the globe have gathered here for these two competitions. There's 16 teams in both the Thomas and the Uber Cup. Those 16 teams have been divided into four groups of four. And over the first four days of competition, every country plays every other country within their group, with the top two teams then qualifying for the quarterfinal knockout stage, which take place on Thursday. Then the semi-finals on Friday, before the Uber Cup final on Saturday and the Thomas Cup final on Sunday. So when we look at the four groups in the Thomas Cup, Group A is headed by Indonesia, the defending champions. Group B features two former winners, Denmark and China. Group C is the only group not to feature former winners, while Group D features Japan and Malaysia, both of which have lifted this coveted trophy in the past. Well, today is day one of competition, as, as, and as you can see here on court one, we've already seen two Uber Cup ties. The first was a Group B, where Chinese Taipei beat Spain 4-1. Spain affected, of course, by the fact that Carolina Marin is not here in Bangkok. Then this afternoon, uh, we saw another Uber Cup encounter with Denmark, number six seeds, beating Malaysia 3-2. It all came down to the fifth and final match of the tie. It was an absolute thriller. This evening, we turn our attention to the Thomas Cup, the men's competition. It's a Group A encounter between the hosts, Thailand, up against the number eight seeds, Korea. Well... The traditional team huddles, Korea, have twice reached the final. The last time, though, was 10 years ago. And as far as the hosts are concerned, well, they've been in one Thomas Cup final, but you have to go back 61 years when that last happened. So today's encounter, of course, five matches within the tie and the standard lineup on the order of play. We're starting with the first men's singles and Paul Kwang Hee, the Olympic quarter finalist, is up against Kunla Wuta Widersan for Thailand, recent winner of the Germans 300 a couple of months ago. Then it's the first men's doubles and the battle of two pairs consisting of a left and right hander for Korea, Kang and Suo, up against the Thailand pair of Charlon Kitamon and Yad Pai Sun. And then it's the second men's singles and Yun Hayok Jin, who has returned to World Babington after four years away from the sport and returned by winning the recent Korean Masters. He's up against the 2019 World Championship bronze medalist, Guntapon Wangchalon. Then the second men's doubles and Choi So Gul and Kim Wo Ho up against two 17-year-olds, Suk Bang and uh, Tira Ratsukun. Then we finish with the third men's singles, uh, Lee Yun Guo for Korea, up against the vastly more experienced Sitokong Tamasin for Thailand. So our first match is the first men's singles, Ho Kwang Hee, the Olympic quarter finalist, up against the three-time former world junior champion, Kun Lawut Widersan. So the players already on court and the toss of the coin. The first duty of our umpire, Bert van Horenbeek. And as you can see, this will be a second meeting between these two players. The only previous time they met was in Vanta last year in the quarterfinal of the Sudaman Cup, the World Mixed Team Championships. And I can tell you that this man came through in three games, 22-20 in the deciding game in a match lasting an hour and 17 minutes. In fact, he came from 12-17 down in the third game to win that only previous encounter between these two. So great expectations on the young shoulders of uh, Kunla Widersan uh, because playing at home is always a pressure situation. But let's look first of all at Ho Kwang Hee, the 26-year-old from Daejeon. He's a tall man, 180, that's 5 foot 11. 
and he is making his fourth appearance at Thomas Cup. This is his fourth consecutive campaign. And of course, best known perhaps for beating the number one seed at the Tokyo Olympics, Momota, in the group stage and went on to that quarter final. So to his young opponent, the 20 year old, uh, though he'll turn 21 in exactly three days time. Kunla Widersan, born in Chonbori, currently enjoying his highest ranking. In fact, it's his 10th week in total, his second spell at a career high of 18. His second Thomas Cup campaign, he played in Aarhus last year, played four matches at second men's singles, all of the group matches plus the quarter final. Won three of them, which was very impressive. So as I was telling you, Bert van Horenbeek of Belgium is our umpire for this one, and Eric de Grosch from Canada is the service judge. So as the players finish their warm-up, the two-minute warm-up period before the start of play. I can bring you right up to date with what's happened so far earlier Ready today to in Group A. The defending champions and the most successful team in the history of the Thomas Cup, Indonesia, who've won the title 14 times. They've come through their first tie, and that was against Singapore, and they won 4-1. So this match now with Thailand, the hosts and Korea, uh, this could prove very, very important in the overall tie as to who qualifies from Group A, because as I was telling you a moment ago, it's only the top two teams that progress through to the quarter-final knockout stage. Represented by Kunlavut Vititsar. And on my left, Korea, represented by Hyo Kwang Hee. Korea to serve. Lovell, play. So Korea in the form of Ho Kwang Hee, far side of the court as we look down. First men's singles always so vital. Every team wants to get off to a winning start. Good opening rally. Ooh, that's a little wild from the Korean. Service over. One lock. Well, had a very good start to the year, did this young man. Uwe Sun won the German 300 event. Oh, yes, nicely done. Well, both these players on court, former world junior champions, though both hugely talented. Wu Kwang Hee won his gold medal here in Bangkok in 2013. And Widersun, the first men's singles player ever to win three consecutive world junior titles in the men's singles discipline. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness me. Well, I did awfully well to recover. I think it's OK. I think it was just a slip. Oh, no, it was more than a slip. It went over on the side of his ankle. That could have been nasty. started this year well, finished last year extremely well as well did uh, Widersan reached the final of the World Tour Finals in Bali, losing out to Axelsen. Oh, 
goodness me, that's a nice neck shot from Paul Quan. He just raises his hand in apology because he got the neck cord there, but he addressed the shuttle so early. Look at that. Look where he's taking it. No wonder he's in control of the rally. As to be said, perhaps Queen La uh, widow son, a little lazy playing the backhand instead of the round the head shot. Yeah, that's a nice smash. The obvious shot straight down the line makes me think that perhaps the cross court lift from the Korean was simply not deep enough. Well, good to see the Thailand Uber Cup team down here as well, supporting the men. One tie in their group. They're in Group C Five, and they beat two. Egypt 5 love earlier today. Again, it was the block or the neck shot from the Korean that really did the damage. Once again, look where he's taking that. His racket arm outstretched, trying to take the shuttle as early as he can. It gives your opponent less time to recover. Also means if nearer you are to the net, the more accurate you can be with your shot. That's gone on. from around the head position in that rally was straight down the line. Second one there, cross court. Ooh, was making his opponent guess which way it's going to come, making him twist and turn. at the moment. Seven, four. Well, it was a nice idea, but it was ambitious, trying to block cross court off a straight smash. A good straight smash at that. Drifted wide. There's a drift in this arena. It's a beautiful arena, seats so about 11,000. But there is a little bit of a drift. Oh, that's nice. Good rally. There we are. As soon as I said we weren't having many long rallies, I'm pretty certain that's the longest of the match so far. Eight, five. Yeah, good body smash. Yeah, but look where his feet are. He's nowhere near the back of the court. Lift was short, got what it deserved. Hey, 22 shots.
Oh, my goodness, what a block. Just wide, that's well left. Yeah, big no, puffer there no. after that right from the Korean. Yeah, clearly wide. Good call, line judge. I thought the Korean had really taken a good chance to make the kill from what was, I think, a pretty good neck shot. Look, he leapt at that. But Uida san was equal to it. Just look at the reactions here. Look at that, it had gone past him. Brilliant. How did he play that deep forehand corner? No backswing of the racket. That's gone he wide. And it's a six ball. point advantage for Thailand's Kunlawut Awidesan at the mid game interval here in the opening game. Just eight minutes to the mid-game interval. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Thank you. Well, one or two errors from the Korean, then I suspect that he's a little bit concerned that he feels he's got to play the perfect shot to play a winner against this man. 11, five. And he's not oh. giving himself any margin Play. for error. Going for the lines too much, he needs to build the rally a little bit more. Guilty of backing off from the net. That wasn't a particularly good net shot, was it? That's why he backed off. And I have to say that it is the Korean who's had more success at the front of the court with his net play. Oh, good. Back and clear. Then a back and cross court for a smash. Fast drop, I meant. That's way long. Now that's a clear Seven. indication of the drift Seven. here at the impact arena. So for singles players, playing with the drift is very much more difficult. And the reason it's more difficult for singles players is because you've got to try and outmaneuver your opponent by pushing to them to the back then bringing them forward, then using angles, push them to the back again. Well, if you can't control the shuttle lifting to the back of the court for the fear it might go long, then that's why it's so much more difficult for a singles player. For a doubles player, playing with the drift means that your attacking play is perhaps even more potent using the drift to your advantage. Who's got the better of the net again? It's the Korean once more. And of course, if Widesan 
is a little bit afraid of lifting from this near side of the court, uh, then the Korean can, of course, close down the net, knowing that the lift is more unlikely. Oh, a little bit of luck for Kumla Widersan. 14-8. Oh, yeah, look at that. Good sportsmanship, though. Shot again from the Korean. Third, third, nine, fourteen. So, of course, a ten just uh, needed to mop up the perspiration. Very hot, humid conditions here in Bangkok. Heavy thunderstorms every afternoon at the moment, at this time of year. Shot again, forces the short lift. Oh, that was going wide. Oh, what a challenge that. Indeed he is. Korea, seven, First two, challenge four, of this tie. Sideways drift from left to right as we look down on the court, and I have a feeling that may have just brought that shuttle back in. Here we go. What does the instant review say? No, it was clearly wide. Challenge Good call, line judge. One challenge remaining. Serving no first. 15 9. Play. a better net shot from Kumla Wood. Oh, didn't move his feet, didn't get himself in position. That was a golden opportunity for Ho Kwang Hee. Challenging again. Out. That was more difficult to tell. That won't have been affected by the drift. Enough pace on it, but the question is, did he clip the line or not? Two challenges permitted per game. One carry your challenges over to the second or third game of the match feels it's worth the challenge and I have to agree with him. Yeah, great challenge. Correction. Great challenge. Caught the line. In. Service over. 10 60.
needs to be careful here for Kwang Hee. Body language to me is signaling that he's perhaps a little bit disappointed in himself so far. Got to keep the head up. Don't let your opponent see that you might be a little bit dispirited. Oh, goodness, that's well right. Yeah, and again, look at the body language after he made the error. And that is concerning if you're a Korean fan. He's short, got what it deserved. And game point opportunities for Kun La Wut with a son. A couple of fistfuls, in fact. Rally. Oh, perfect. Perfect. What a lovely shot. And he hasn't really exploited the drift so far in this opening game. Oh, Kwang Hee. Well, this final shot, the punch clear, he really hit through with that with a great deal of power, and it still stayed in. That really is an indication of how he could have used hitting against the drift to his advantage in this opening game. But he really hasn't done it. Well, that's about the first time I can remember in this opening game. So still another nine game point opportunities for Thailand. Brilliant. Oh, challenge that. Yes, I saw that is on the line. Well, if I'm wrong and the challenge is wrong, first game to Thailand. But I thought that might well have clipped the line. What does the instant review think? Here we go. Yep, indeed, clipped the line. Good challenge. Correction, game. 12, 20. Yes. Very sharp. It's possible. Well, I think Kwang He just saying to the umpire, he's my opponent is trying to indicate that the shuffle's out before the line judge has made a decision. And of course you're not allowed to do that. And that's gone long. 13. Drift coming into play. Three. Game points have come and gone. challenge from Kula Widerson and that time I think it may have been out. One judge calling it in. It's his first challenge as a match. I know it is another good call. So four game points have come and gone. Surely not. He couldn't could he?
good net shot. Oh, that's wild. So on a fifth game point opportunity, Kunla Wut Winasan closes out the opening game against Tor Kwan He. Oh, my goodness. Had to work hard for it in the end. Looked to be cruising at 2010. Twenty-one fourteen. In the end, the opening game in favour of Thailand. Twenty-two minutes for game number one. Well, he's given himself a hard task, has Ho Kwang Hee. Because now he's playing with the drift, which, as I was explaining in the opening game, game, is very much more difficult for a singles player. Level. Play. So Thailand fans will be feeling fairly confident at the moment. That's a lovely shot from Guido San. Caught that smash from the tired player. Oh, that was going wide. Good rally. So is that. Two, this rally of the match so no. far. I'm sure I could have left one earlier in the rally that was going every bit as wide as that one. Just a little piece of advice from his coach. Pretty certain it's Wong Tuck Ming in the coach's chair for career. And this is very, very worrying if you're a Korean fan. I know it's very, very early stages. But I thought towards the end of that opening game, I didn't like the body language of this man. And I think with the distinct difference in ends. Yeah. Oh, that was going wide as well. Yeah. He hadn't built the rally. 
can't hope to hit winners at will. Singles is all about outmaneuvering your opponent, wait until they're slightly out of position. Then you go for the winner. Yeah, he's lost his confidence altogether, hasn't he? Well, it's due in very, very large part to this man's brilliance. Kunla would son. the problem with the drift he's got to try something different here for Quang he yeah, it's clearly long isn't it Babington terms that's not even close game and seven love for the 20 year old oh, Dennis. oh what a loose return of serve pounced on by Wido San no when I said try something different I didn't mean that Completely lost confidence, lost belief. Thank you. Oh, my goodness, got wheel spin. So yeah. Well, it just, he, before he served that last point, he was sort of scuffing the court surface as if he wasn't really happy with the court attendants mopping. And that's proof that it wasn't good enough. Watch his, his right leg just slips away from him. There it goes. Yeah, that could be very dangerous you need to be very careful and the problem is with the really humid conditions here it's very very difficult for these court attendants to really mop the court as well as the players would like well thankfully he's all right punch clear and another that's going wide oh, I don't think he we just realizes there's a sideways drift from left to right as we look down on the court and that's a couple he's taken on his backhand net that I think he could have left that one that's going wide that's clearly wide saying he was the first men's singles player to win three consecutive world junior titles. Three players have achieved it. Ratchanuk Intanon from Thailand won three women's singles world junior titles and Chen Ching Chen three mixed doubles world gold medals. Serve, serve, 
two, ten. And it is pretty remarkable in junior men's singles because of the physical development. Won his first gold medal as a 16-year-old. That's extraordinary in an under-19 competition. That's a beautiful Third kill from the front of the court. 11, and two, the mid-game interval eight, with a nine-point advantage. And quite frankly, Hula Wut Widersan. That's brilliant, isn't it? Very little backswing of the racket. Holds it, holds it, then tightens the fingers to produce the power. He looks to be cruising to me. Very impressive indeed. A game and 11-2 up. No, it's not uh, on Tuck Meng. Apologies to the coach. I couldn't quite see who that was under the mask. Well, it's a mountain to climb as far as Hawkeye He is concerned. It's gone wide. And I so was chatting to my three, colleague seven. just before this tie started, Steen Peterson, who called the previous tie the afternoon session, and we were talking about how Thailand could win this tie against the number eight seeds Korea. And we felt that in all probability, Thailand had to win Four, the three singles. Seven. And we thought that this one could be crucial because Ho Kwang Hee has caused many an upset in world badminton. The first time we all took notice of him was when he beat uh, Lee Chong Wei in the qualifying of the Korean Super Series back in 2015. And Lee Chong Wei at the time, although he was making his way back from suspension, was six time finalist at the Korean Open in the previous six years. So that was a huge result for this man. And of course he's Lee. beaten former world number one, Kento Momota couple of times, including in the Olympics. And he's always a danger. All right, there's the sideways drift. I think Hunla Wut's widow son is beginning to realize that and the extent of the sideways drift. he's got an opportunity to hit in a downward direction for Kwang He. He's basically going for a winner. Now look, this goes halfway down the net. That's not even close. Yep, I'd, I think he has to try and hit in a downward direction, but you've got to work the rally first. Play the angles, make sure the shot is a good foot or even up to a meter inside the sideline. Gradually move your opponent out of position before there's a real opportunity to play the winner. They're trying to force the winner too early in the rally. That's going wide. Oh, goodness, neither of them know about the sideways drift. Oh, that's landed well in. Yeah. Shuttle's holding up this near side. 15, four. Okay. Well, you've got to credit this man, haven't you? Widersan. 
played brilliantly throughout. I have to say, I also like the attitude of Guida Sun. No celebrations after rallies, or very, very rarely. Just quietly and calmly gets on with the job. Twelve-point advantage. Oh, he was early on that. My goodness, that was early. Well, that's the problem for Hook when he turn and play the backhand from deep in court. Your back's to the net. You can't see where the court is. You can't see your, where your opponent is. Yeah. It's all one-way traffic now. Well, when you consider the only previous meeting between these two was less than a year ago, last autumn, and it was the Korean who won on that occasion. I think that this, of course, the Korean hasn't played his best badminton today, but I think it's a, a very good indicator of how much Kunla Wood Sun has improved over the last 12 months. I think he's a much better player than his 18 ranking suggests. Missed it. Serve is over. Five, 19. Oh, my goodness, that was wild. Well, Six, 19. way long of the back line. opportunities for There's Thailand to get off to the perfect start. Match point six. Widdesan absolutely destroyed the Olympic quarter finalist Hu Fang He in two straight games. 21-14, 21 6. Yeah, brilliant. 21-14, And this final rally pretty much summing up Hu Fang He's difficult day. Another one into the net. So 41 minutes for the victory and the perfect start for Thailand. 21-14, 21-6, the victory for Kunla Widersan against Ho Kwang He for Korea.
So welcome back to Bangkok and the Impact Arena. In fact, it's a great big complex, many conference halls and convention center. So as far as this Group A tie is concerned, uh, an excellent start by Widersan, winning in two straight games against Hawkran He. It's the first men's doubles next, and it's Kang Ming Hyuk and Su Sang Jae, the left-hander for Korea, up against Charnam Kitamon and Yad Pai Song from Thailand. Both pairs have a left-hander, and that always makes for an interesting matchup. For the Thai players, as we look first of all, now the Koreans making their way onto court. Well, they're both in their third Thomas Cup campaign. Well, the first time they played together in a Thomas Cup campaign. New partnership, formed their partnership at the Indonesia Masters in Bali in November. Uh, their opponents were both part of the uh, team, the Thai team in Aarhus last year. Uh, but neither of them played, uh, so Yud Pai Song uh, was selected for the quarterfinal second men's doubles with Kuovara Nukro, uh, but that match was not contested uh, because the tie was already decided. Of course, at the knockout stage, we don't necessarily play all five matches within the tie. We do here at the group stage. So first meeting between these two pairs, and that's very understandable uh, because this tie pair is a relatively new combination. Well, I think he's forgotten to take his mask off. Chalun Kittamon. There he is. Yep. Realises that with formalities over, you're allowed to remove your mask. So, the left-hander for Korea is Soo Seung Jae, 24 years of age, uh, from Jeonju. And he's been as high as number seven in the world, but that was with Choi Soo Gu, uh, who we will see in the second men's doubles. 24 career finals across the disciplines for the left-handed Korean, for Kan Ming Yuk. He's 23 years of age from Suwon. And he's a tall athlete, 183, that's six foot tall. And he's been a bronze medalist at the Asian Championships with former partner Kim Won Ho. So to the left hander, Nantukon Yod Pai Song, born in Udontani. Now, oh, I had slightly different information there in northeast Thailand. Uh, but uh, he's certainly 28 years of age. His partner, Charlon Pon, Charlon Kitamon, uh, was 25 last month, born here in the Thai capital of Bangkok. So they played one tournament so far this year. That was the recent Badminton Asia Championships. They lost in the first round to the eventual quarter finalists, Reng Siang Yu and Tang Xian. Lost in two straight games. So I have to confess, I have not seen uh, this Thailand player playing together previously. So Kamarul Lailia from Indonesia, our umpire for this one and Evo Castle from Switzerland, the service judge. So I'm very much looking forward to this, uh, the Hung Thai combination. I came down to the arena here over the last couple of days and watched them training, had a word with some of the players through a translator. And they were all very helpful and all very nice. And it was lovely to meet them all. Now, one or two of them kept saying to me, unbelievable, I have no idea why. On my right, Thailand, represented by Chalam Pon, Chalam Kitaporn, and Natakan Yod Paisong. 
And on my left, Korea, represented by Kang Min Yuk and So Seung Jae. Thailand to serve, Nata Khan Yot Pai Song to So Seung Jae. Love all, play. So Thailand nearest to us in the red shirts. Well, as far as this Korean pair is concerned, I was telling you they only formed their partnership in Bali at the end of last year when we had three World Tour events back to back. And then at the beginning of this year, the Korean pair won the Korean Open Super 500 event, beating Alfie and Adianto. The defending champions beat them in the final. And that was their first title in only their third tournament together. So to say the Koreans have made a good start to their partnership is a bit of an understatement. Well, a bit of a, a fun fact about Chalon Kitamon. The blonde Thai player. I was doing my research and trying to figure out who he had had his best partnership with. Oh! And probably it was Kitty Sakunande with whom he reached 85 in the world. But I did find out the fun fact that he's played, here he is, uh, both men's doubles and mixed doubles. And he's played international tournaments with 20 different partners. So that's extraordinary. They keep trying him with partnerships. Let's hope that this is a permanent partnership Three, with oh. Yud Paison. Yeah, he's a very passionate player, isn't he? Deep on the defence, saw Sang Jay earlier in that rally. Oh, that's gone well wide. That's good attacking play from Kang. Turned up. Service over, four, five. Good Poisson. Here he is. Won a couple of titles, incidentally, with Manapong Jongjik. Service over. 2017 India International Challenger, Six, and then a year four. later, Vietnam International Challenger <laughs> event. Just wide. Service over five six. Oh, that's a lovely play from Nantakan. My six, goodness me. Oh. Really making the effort to take it early at the net there. Keep the pressure on Kang Min Kyok. Nice drop. Nice change of pace. I like that. Two powerful smashes, then the disguise drop from Saucy and Jake. Seven, six. 
There's the second powerful smash. Then there's a disguised drop shot. Used to be a very fine singles player. Won a bronze medal at the World Junior Championships in the boys' singles back in 2013. Play. Song. Look at that. Where did that come from? How on earth did he play that? And following forward, had his opponents got it back, he was ready and waiting. Well, that's the shot of the day so far. Thailand player gave up on that. They thought the rally was won, but the shuttle came back. Well, they were convinced it hit the floor first, or maybe they were just wishful thinking. That's short, so is that. Well, this is an exciting young Thai pair. Although Yad Pai Sung is not that young. Oh, a good disguise drop Service once again by Saw Siang Jay. And it is the Koreans that go to the mid-game interval with a three-point advantage. What a good opening half to this first men's doubles encounter. Well, I have a feeling that the Korean coach was Kim Young Kyung. It is extremely difficult to tell when everybody's wearing their masks. 11, 8, play. Look at the Korean defensive stance. They were so far back in court. Service over, 9-11. 
look where they're standing. They're almost on the double service line. Well, especially the left-handed, Sorsun Jay, I think he could be vulnerable to a disguised drop shot. Oh, nice idea. Service over, 12, 9. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Lovely change of pace. 13-9. Thank you. Yeah, did well to intercept it in the first place. Yeah, that's the problem you see with the deep defensive stance. Of course, the deeper you are in court, the more time you've got to see and react to Play. the power smash. But you are very vulnerable to that disguise drop. You have to keep a happy balance. Stand your ground enough that you can still get the drop shot and still have fast enough reactions 13. to get the smash back. It's easier said than done. broken the string of his racket and they just got it back and got it back to him he wouldn't have been able to control the next shot oh. ah, I like that I like the way Seven that he goes forward yard Python Flick serve. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, I've been waiting for that to happen. Kang is so good when he moves forward. The flat exchanges. When he gets involved in the flat exchanges, there, immediately comes forward, hunts the shuttle at the net. Very fast reactions. First saw that when he won a bronze medal at the Badminton Asia Championships in Wuhan in 2019. Yeah, clearly wide. Strange challenge. challenge. One challenge remains. Especially as that's going with the sideways drift. Both of you do not go around. 
Yeah, don't wander around after the end of the rally. Nampa Lailia from Indonesia. She's very aware of all these delaying tactics. That's nicely played. Service over, 16-13. and an even better return. Service over, 14-16. Oh, way, way long. That's a, a real good indicator of the drift. The lengthways 17, drift. 14. Wasn't far off the blue carpet, that one. of damage with the drop shot. I know it wasn't an outright winner that time, but it set up the rally. The drop from Saucy Young Jake. It's just wide. Good placement of the smash from Yap by Song. Look, he, he moves, jumps round the head position. Look at that, leaps from the centre of the court to play that cross court smash. Great athleticism. And again. And there's just one point in it. Yeah, apologizes. Oh, that's good placement. 17, 18. Nothing wrong with hitting at your opponent. Show, show, show him. Thank you. Crucial point. Oh, yes, that's well taken. Well set up once more by the left handed Yapai Song. And well finished off by Charlon Kitamon. Look at that. Launched himself towards the net. 18 all. Four straight points. points and into the lead. Would you believe it? 19-18. Well, 14-18 uh, down, I think most people like I thought, well, Koreans just applying enough pressure to close out this opening game. Well, how wrong I was. It's a run of six straight points, and now it's two game point opportunities for Thailand. This is remarkable. Oh, 
It's a good serve here from Charlad Kitamon. Oh, opportunity was there. Seven over, 19, 20. Oh, that was brave. That was good play from Kang. He is so good when he rushes forward to the net. 20 all. Extra points required until there's a clear two point winning margin. Play. Tell him what. You must be ready to receive, okay? Play on. Was a nervous looking shot from Yap Paison. So, having saved two game points, now the Koreans have a game point opportunity themselves. Short. Yeah. Game. Ah, there was indecision at the back of the court from Yad Paison. First game, one by and in the Korea. end, Kam Min Hyuk and Su Siang Jae give Korea the opening game in this first men's doubles encounter. Well, what a thrilling opening game. 21 minutes. Oh, some thrilling badminton. ตอนนี้ก็บอลจบสัปดาห์ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่
that'd be very understandable Two. if it was a bit oh. of a reaction to the tension of the closing stages of that opening game. A couple of simple errors so far in this second game. There's another. Careful Five, here, pair from Thailand. Two. Mind you, I thought that the Koreans were uh, cruising when they were up in that opening game. 18 14 up they were, and then they found themselves 18 20 down. You never know. That's the beauty of sport. Well, with that one, Saw Seon Jay swayed the body out of the way, give himself the freedom to play the defensive shot. Six straight points. Oh, my goodness me, what a smash. Fabulous angle, fabulous disguise. Seven, two. Yeah. Didn't, didn't really react to it. Yeah, Paisong. Such was the disguise. Yeah, eight straight points. Eight, two. Got to stop this run, the Thailand pair. Play. They do. Seven over. Well, it's three, a mountain to climb eight. from here. Koreans really look to me as if they've settled nicely. Oof, that was quick on that flick serve. Oh, my goodness, came off the frame. Off the frame from Chalum Kitamon. And then it was a brilliant cross-court net shot from Saucy Young Jay. Take a look at this. Look at that. But even better from the left-handed Korean. Extraordinary shot. Thank you. On Lovely board. block here. But uh, look at that one. Uh, Amazing. You're back. Uh, thank you. How on earth did he do that? Nine, three. Play. Oh, a little bit of luck on the net courts for Saucy and Jay. So to the mid game interval, Eleven, ten of the last three, eleven points. Interval. In fact, it's even more than that. They will love two down, so 11 of the last 12 points. Oh, 
It's going to help their cause, and that's for certain. That's a lovely Seven return of serve. For 11. That's a good rally. Oh, brilliant. Oh, it's run off to change his racket, So Sung Jay. Oh, and his partner's lifted long. He wanted to play the high lift Please. to give him his partner time to go off court and come back on. But he forgot about the drift. Oh, yes, what a spectacular rally. A couple of dives early on. Okay, thank you. Off he goes. Five, eleven. Play. It's gone wrong. Well, you just never know, do you? Six, All of a sudden, it seems believable again. Set up with a good return of serve. Seven, over, seven, 12. And then the left hander stepping into the mid court area, taking the shuttle early, and therefore able to hit in a downward direction. Clever, clever play from Kang. He knew his partner had broken a string. And his placement of that shot, it was all about placement. It wasn't really very much power. to be in doubles. All the players have got such good defences. Has to be pinpoint accuracy to either force a weak reply or to play the winner. Good flick. Oh! Brilliant. Oh! Don't believe it! Effort. What a rally! Well, Ya Pai Song giving it absolutely everything. I think he made three dives in that rally. His partner was playing defensive shots off the floor. Look at that. Bit of a showmanship. 
defensive shot. Extraordinary. Absolutely okay, brilliant. There he goes again. On court. And gets up again in one movement, then behind the back. Well, absolutely extraordinary. And absolutely brilliant. 14 9. Extended the run Nine. by an extra shot. Oh, yes. A return of serve. Not tight enough. Got what Nine. it deserved. for Kang. Eight, and so eight, in nine. all honesty, he created his own luck there. Look how he's crouching down at the front of the court, no centre of gravity. Can see through the net then. Instead of trying to look through the tape and look or look over the tape, he's looking through the net. Can follow the game better. 19, nine. 10 point advantage. And two points away from levelling this tie at one match apiece. Oh. Nice, a nice drop. Service over. Ten, nine, Good attacking play, good angle 20. of attack from Kang. And it's now Ten. match point opportunities for Korea in this first men's doubles. Super play. And tuck on. 12, 20. Well, he really has given it his all today, hasn't he? They both have. They're both the Thai players. But I think the left-hander, Yad Pai Song, has been the more spectacular of the two. Two match points saved. Three match points have come and gone for the Koreans. Flick serve. Yeah, well worked. Well, in the first match of this type, we needed five game point opportunities in the 
opening game before we decide. Converted. It's now a fifth match point opportunity here in the second match of the tie for the Koreans. this to end and I can understand why playing the match of their 15, lives so far the Thailand pair and the home fans are right behind them look at that final kill brilliant thank you Well, five match points have come and gone, but another five remain for Korea. Surely one of these five. Oh, this time, yeah. sixth opportunity. And Korea finally converts in the first men's doubles. Kang and So are beating Chalam Kitamon and Yo Pai Song. In two thrilling games, opening game really was spectacular. Saving two game points in the opening game, the Koreans, before eventually winning it 22 20. 21 15, the second game, that's how they won it, the final rally. And Two straight games, 41 minutes, 22-20, 21 15. So both our matches so far in this tie, 41 minutes in duration. So they take leave of centre stage and we look forward to the second men's singles. Jun Hayuk Jin up against uh, Guntapon Wang Chalon for Thailand. Welcome back to the Impact Arena here in Nontobori, in the northern suburbs of Bangkok. It's a wonderful complex, not just this wonderful arena that we're in at the moment, which seats 11,000. It's got shopping malls, restaurants, wonderful facility. So as far as the overall tie is concerned, this Group A 
encounter between the number eight seeds Korea and the number nine seeds Thailand. Well, their seeding in world terms suggests that it should be close and it's one all, which sets it up very nicely for the second men's singles. And it's uh, Jun Hyuk Jin for Korea up against uh, Gumtapon Wang Cholon, the 2019 World Championship bronze medalist. Well, Jion making a, a very welcome return to the international stage, basically out of the sport for four years. This is the second meeting between these two players. But look at that, the last time they played back in 2015, it was January 2015, so over seven years ago. So I'm really not sure that we can read too much into that previous encounter, which incidentally was won by the Korean John Hyuk Jin. One in three games, That's seven years ago. Uh, they were both teenagers at the time. So this man has enjoyed success on the world stage, but so too has the Korean, Jun Hyuk Jun. 26 years of age, uh, born in Ulsan, in the southeast of the country, neighbors Busan. And he reached the final of the Australian Super Series event back in 2016. That's his only Super Series uh, final. Uh, but earlier this year, he was promoted from the qualifying at the Korean Masters Super 300 and promptly won the event, uh, beat uh, Naraoka of Japan in the final. His opponent, Guntapon Wanchalon, is 23 years of age, born here in Bangkok. And he is down one place on the world ranking this week to 22, but as you can see, has been as high as 12. Spent a total of five weeks at number 12 across two different spells. Both of these players at their third Thomas Cup campaign. Uh, umpire for this one, Eric de Roche of Canada and Bertrand Horenbeck from Belgium will be the service judge. So as far as uh, Gunterpon Wangchalon is concerned, I was telling you that he had won a bronze medal at the World Championships, and that was back in 2019 in Basel. There he is nearest to us. And in winning Ready that bronze play. medal, he became the first player from Thailand ever to medal in the men's singles at the World Championships. And the interesting thing is, is that he's won a World Championship medal but he's never won an international tournament title. So to win a World Championship medal before a title is really quite extraordinary. There he is. Has had a rough time during the pandemic as Wang Chalon. A couple of quarterfinals. Uh, but it was prior to the pandemic, back in 2019, the last time he reached a semi-final of an individual event, and that, of course, included those World Championships. This man in the wilderness for four years. Oh, what a comeback. Just recently at that Ladies Korean Masters. Extraordinary right, result. Korea, represented by Yong Kyung Jin. And on my left, Thailand. Represented by Kantafan Wangcharon. Thailand to serve. Love all. Play. So Guntapon Wangcharon of Thailand, far side of the court, getting this second men's singles oh. underway against Hyun Hyuk Jin for Korea. One low.
Yes, that's well worked by Wang Chalon. Service over. Two, one. Little block. Doesn't try to be too clever. Knew his opponent was way out of position. Now, just to clarify about Jun Hyuk Jin, four years in the wilderness, he did actually play both the Sudaman Cup last year and the Thomas Cup, but his win at the Korean Masters was his first individual tournament for over four years. Good rally. Oh, my goodness. No, that was a wasted opportunity. Number by Wong Chalon. Two all. Yeah, now he's got the opportunity and he finds hits the shuttle halfway down the net. skill from the Three, Korean. Two. Little hold and push with disguise straight down the line. Yeah, it really was a shame he got injured back in 2018. The Korean just been showing such promise 2015 five finals winning three of them 2016 as I was telling you he reached the final of the Australian Open Super Series event where he lost to Vitting Hoos following year 2017 won the Korea Grand Prix gold event and only played four events in the beginning of 2018 and then hadn't played an individual four, tournament since two. until that recent Korea Masters Another missed opportunity by Guntapon. Yeah, completely mistimed. In fact, I think that probably came off the shaft of the racket. Yeah, that's Five, the second time two. that Jun has swayed the body and then played the disguise straight down the line. Flat drive, very effective. As if Wang Chalot was expecting the smash down the other side. Oh, oh. Korean just proving he can hit the shuttle Seven, wherever he wants two. from the same position, straight down the line, play it down cross court. Straight points. Oh, good speed coming forward. 
three, from one channel. Seven. Yeah, good commitment. No holding back, fully committed. Yeah, so he should be. That's four shots to the same place. Five. Six. Forehand net of, of his opponent. Six shots in that rally, at over. least, from Gion back four, to the forehand eight. net of Wang Chalon. Obvious tactic. Short, uh, got what it deserved. What on earth happened to that backhand there from Gion? Five, Almost as if he changed eight. his mind. Didn't look committed at all on that. No, we're near the back of the court with his clear. That's the problem if you play a cross-court attacking shot and it's not good enough, then all your opponent has to do is play the straight block and you've got the full diagonal of the court to scamper. And that's precisely what happened to Gion. And he wasn't fast enough. And that's where he got into trouble. Well left. Hardly touched that one. Gion. Seven, and it goes long as a back eight. line. Such is the drift. Four straight points for Thailand. the previous longest rally by one shot. Thank you. Uh, this is a very good comeback. Five points adrift a moment ago. Now back level. Oh, 
that's a good return of serve, I like that. And a good way to bring the run of points to an end. I think we can safely say he was waiting for that push down his forehand side. Gion. wide well he's Highland challenging Chalink, he's going to pawn one chalong no, i think the line judge may have got that right but i have to say i'm a long way away from the court here in the impact arena so what does hawkeye say The line judge did get it right. Challenge so it is a three-point advantage for the Korean at the mid-game interval. interval. Eleven eight, the scoreline. Well, considering that the second men's doubles, there are two 17-year-olds representing Thailand. I think 11, 8, play. Korea must be the favourites for the second men's doubles, so this for Wang Chalon is almost a must-win situation to keep Thailand's hopes alive in this Group A encounter. That's a lovely shot by Jion. 12-8. Well, we had a run of five straight points from Wang Chalon. Now we're now on four straight points by Jion. Oh, good angle. And again, good follow up. Oh, oh that's a pity from Gunther Pong's point of view. 13-8. He'd done all the hard work in the rally. That's a great smash. He knew that the reply had to be a straight block, and he was in so quickly. But then made a mistake on his cross-court attempted winner. Got to take those chances. That's what sport's about, half opportunities. But when there's a big opportunity like that, you have to make it count. Oh, string's gone, I think, in John's racket. Yeah, that's amazing. No, no, maybe not. Maybe just a miss it.
So it's now six straight points for the Korean. And all that hard work of five straight points from Wang Chalon all gone to waste. Controlled on that push from Gion. Considering he's hitting with the drift. That's magnificent control. Wow, perfect. Seven straight points. Of shot by the Korean. 16-8. Difficult shot to play. Lift off the defence. So much easier to block in singles. Well, somehow. Upon Wang Chalon has got to stop this run. This is eight straight points now. Eight all to 16 8. Oh, another one with great control from the Korean. Lands inside the line. 17 8. Oh, this is extraordinary, quite frankly. Yeah, plum on the line. I honestly thought, having been 3-8 down and catching back up to 8-all, I thought Wang Chalon was right back in it. Hasn't won a point since. That's short. Gone wide. Now oh, I can hardly believe what I'm watching here. Ten 18, straight points now eight. to the Korean Jun Hyuk Jin. Points comes Nine, to an end. Uh, needed a brilliant cross court net shot from Juan Chalon. Look at it. And it was brilliant because he took it so close to the floor. He took it so late. Normally, to play a cross court net shot like that, you need to be taking it early. Chalon needs to try and move his opponent to the back of the court and then play him forehand net. I think the forward lunge, yep. his forward net there by Jun looks a little bit suspect to me, as if he's a little bit wary about it. Looks 
tentative in his movement on that particular shot. Thank you. Yeah, it's good pressure. Good pace on that push to the back. 11, 18. Well, you've always got to believe that if your opponent can win 10 straight points, then there's no reason why you shouldn't do the same. Now forehand net. Oh, that's a good shot. Yeah. Yeah, the cross court half smash from the Korean. That one put his opponent under a lot of pressure. Thank you. Two points away from the opening game for Korea. Well worked. 12-19. Oh, my goodness me. Service error. Oh, what a time for that to happen. Gifts, game point opportunities. Opening game, 21-12 in favour of Korea. Korea in the form of this man, Jun Hyuk Jin. Well, from eight all in the first game, he really took control from there on. Ten straight points to go 18-8 up. And there was simply no way back from that sort of deficit for Gunther Pong Wanchalon. So the opening game, 21-12 in favour of Korea in 23 minutes. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Young, yeah, back on court, please. Thank you. Well, one game to the good. Second game. Korea in the form of Jun Hyuk Jin. Play. And he really showed us in that opening game why he has been as high as 17 on the world ranking. Four years ago, 
one week at number 17. Oh. There's no doubt in my mind he should be a top 20 player on a regular basis. One low. pressurizes the body initially when he's coming forward one two at the body which means that it's very very difficult then for Wang Chilong to cr create any angles so even if he gets it back it's going to come back into the hitting zone of the Korean It's a little bit of a worried expression on the face of Gunterpon. a delightful drop shot from Tion. Three, one. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to figure out what has gone wrong with Gunterpon Wanchalong. 2019 World Championship bronze medal and since then hasn't really developed in the way that Certainly I was hoping, and I'm sure a lot of his fans were hoping. It looks to me as if he's got much stronger legs than he did three years ago. But he seems to have lost some of his explosive power. Everything's played pretty much at the same pace. Look at this rally. Movement very much on the same tempo. There's a little bit of injection of pace, but not really. Yeah, that's a nice angle. I think he's got to work on suddenly changing Two, the pace within three. the rally. Now, you see, there's an opportunity. Having played the Three nice net shot, I think that Wang Chalon should have used explosive, two. quick movement back in court, a big jump smash to really put the pressure on. But look, he's just sort of wandering back. I know he mistimed that, so it's probably a bad example. But there's no real effort to suddenly inject the pace and take the shuttle early on the attacking plate. we ought to bring into the equation the fact that a certain young man called uh, Kun Lohut uh, san has come up through the rankings, also from Thailand, and uh, sort of knocked Gunterpong Wanchalon off his perch as the 
most talented potential player from Thailand. Four, four. And last year at the Thomas Cup in Aarhus, Wong Chalon was playing first men's singles and he played all four ties in the campaign. So all of a sudden he's having to play second fiddle to Widersan. Well, that's maybe psychologically affecting him as well. Yes, lovely, lovely play from Jiun. Now, this is a lesson in about placement. Nothing spectacular. Good placement, good tactical awareness. Oh, that is just glorious. Well, I said he was a master tactician. Jin. When have we seen him hit a big smash winner in this match? Hardly ever. It's all about placement. It's all about thought. How to get my opponent out of position. Forehand net, push flat into the backhand corner, and then forehand net again. Outmaneuvered. smash oh that's a, a lovely smash this time from Gunter Von Wanchalon super angle that's what the home fans want to see more of
That's in. Yeah. How many times did the Korean make his opponent twist and turn in that rally? Six. Let's have a look at this. Forehand. Now down his backhand. Now down his forehand. And I can tell you, he was made to twist and turn long before that, too. Another half smash, but it was so accurate down the backhand side of his opponent. Oh, good punch, clear. This is a good rally. One of the longest of the match, I suspect. Eight, six. off balance so he has to play that round the head shots one shall on He did that a couple of times in the opening game, didn't he? Sways the body. Nine, Flat push six. into the deep corner. Yeah, holds that shot until the last moment. It's very, very well disguised. Oh, there we go again. Does it time and again with the back of grip, hold and flick. And his opponent just left stranded. straight points from 6 all to 11-6 and the mid-game interval in favour of the Korean Jun Hyuk Jin. Yeah, halfway down the net. No, he's looking good at the moment to take a, a second point for Korea in this first Group A tie for both of these <laughs> countries. Card one, 20 seconds. Card one, 20 seconds. But when you need to do this, you follow the first or something. Well, well, well. Agustui Santoso 
former Indonesian player, now coach here in Thailand. And I think I heard him say, you've got to suddenly be quicker. Great minds think alike. Now, it's got to change the pace. Pace of movement and pace of shot. Play. Oh, should have put that away. Another long rally. And another one lands in. Twelve, yeah, he's six. not going to challenge. He knows full well. Yeah, it was on the line. Or maybe just inside the line. There's six straight points now for the Korean. Look, looks tired 13, to me. Come to Pong Wang Chalon. I wonder how much is physical and how much is psychological. Seven straight points now to the Korean. You just cannot afford to give opponents, well, it's not giving, but allow your opponent to have these sort of runs. Ten straight points in the opening game, seven straight points now here in the second. Not at this level. Just can't let it happen. Finally, over. The run is broken. Seven thirty. Yes. Can the phone? Want to change it? Don't squeeze it. Just show it, okay? Yeah, I'm just saying you've got to ask me to change the shuttle. You can't just wander off court. In position. 14, oh, it does look seven. tired. That's concerning for the whole Thailand team. Because the World Championship bronze medalist playing at second men's singles, you've got to fancy your chances in that one. Well, quite frankly, here today, I think those chances are rapidly diminishing. Kuhn's got a, 15, a really lovely eight. push from backhand net position. But he does play it across court an awful lot of the time. Uh, 
Wanchalon doesn't seem to be reading it, which means that it's a huge quality as far as deception is concerned by this man because Thank he's you. getting his opponent into trouble so often with that same shot. Oh, delightful drop. Absolutely delightful. 16 A. Yes, change it. Look at that. Clip the top of the net before it went over. of the last 12 points to the Korean. Oh, that's a beauty. Well, that time he played it from the forehand side. Gion, we've seen it so many times with the backhand action. The hold and drive deep into court. That time from the forehand side, that was a beauty. traffic now. Oh, you've got to give credit to this man, but you can't help but wonder as well what's happened to Wang Chalon, as I was saying earlier. And again, no, it didn't come over. Crossover. over. Nine, 90. Yeah. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Just guided it across court. 19. suspects it's too little too late as far as this man is concerned
out. Smash goes wide. And it's now match point opportunities for Korea. Match point 11. Nine of them to be precise. Challenge here from Thailand challenge. Upon I fear he won't win that challenge and it's match over. Always disappointing win the match. Oh, he has won the challenge. Well done. I'm going to say it's always Out. disappointing when a match ends on a challenge. It's sort of over. a bit of a dampener to uh, the winning moment. 12, but it wasn't a winning 20. moment. towards the right shoulder of his opponent and on his second match point opportunity Jun Hyuk Jun from Korea match won by Korea. wins the match 21-12 21-12 so symmetry in the scoreline 54 minutes in total this the winning moment the smash Towards the right shoulder. Change of angle. And that win by Jun giving Korea a 2-1 lead in the overall tie. Just shy of 54 minutes. 21-12. 21-12 against Guntapon Wang Chalon. Well, coming up next is the second men's doubles, Choi Sogu and Kim Won Ho for Korea. Up against the two 17 year olds, Sukban and Tae Ratsakun.
So welcome back to the Impact Arena here in Montebori, just north of downtown Bangkok. And this is a Group A match in the Thomas Cup. And it's Thailand, the hosts against Korea. And as you can see, Thailand having got off to a very good start and now 2-1 down to the number eight seeds of Korea. Korea, incidentally, two-time beaten finalists at the Thomas Cup. So, as far as the Koreans are concerned, Choi So Gu and Kim Won Ho, and they are up against two 17-year-olds. Vakupon Teoratsukun and Pirachai Supun. So in the background there, that's uh, Choi Soo Gyu. He's 26 years of age. He's in his third Thomas Cup campaign. So too, incidentally, is his partner. Uh, 181, five foot 11, just under. And he has been as high as seven on the world ranking with Soo Seung Jae, who we saw in the first of the men's doubles matches. His partner, Kim Won Ho, used to play with Kang Ming Hyuk, who we saw in the first men's doubles, so they swapped partnerships. He's just 22 years of age, so he'll turn 23 next month. From Suwon, and uh, they are currently 115 in the world ranking. They went down four places this week, but don't pay any attention to that uh, because uh, they've only played five tournaments and you need at least 10 to get anywhere near realistic ranking. Uh, so to the Thailand pair and the left-hander is Bakapon uh, and 17 years of age and he was born here in Montebori which is as I was telling you just north of Bangkok and the place that hosted the Thomas and Uber Cup finals four years ago and is hosting it again. Such was the success four years ago. His partner, also 17 years of age, Pirachai Sukpan, and he was born in Lampang, uh, which is a mountainous region in northern Thailand, just east of Chiang Mai. And uh, these two Thai players won the bronze medal at the under 17. Asia Junior Championships in Surabaya in Indonesia back in 2019. So they played regularly together as uh, juniors. Ivo Kassel from Switzerland is our umpire for this one. And Kamoaro Alailia of Indonesia is the service judge. First meeting, understandably, between these two pairs, uh, because I can tell you that the Thai combination have only played one previous match in senior badminton. And that was back in 2019, uh, when they lost in the qualifying at the Vietnam International Challenger event. In fact, I think they played two matches there. I've just given you duff information. I think they won their first qualifying match and then lost in the second round of the qualifying. Uh, but uh, certainly only one tournament Ladies in senior badminton. On my right, Thailand, represented by Tirachai Sukpan and Pakapon Tiraratsakol. And on my left, Korea, represented by Choi Sogyu and Kim Won Ho. Korea to serve, Kim Won Ho to Pakapon Tiraratsakol. Love all, play. So, Korea for the side of the court, Choi and Kim. One Two love. very physically strong athletes, especially this man, Choi Sol Gu. Twenty-one career finals for Choi. And of course, Two both men's love. doubles and yes. mixed doubles. And the man who's just played the winner, Kim Won Ho. 
is the son of Olympic gold, silver and bronze medalist Gil Young R. Three, Our gold medal was in the mixed doubles discipline in Atlanta in 1996, playing with Kim Nong Moon. Well, good start Four by the Koreans. Left. It looks to me as if the 17-year-olds are a little bit nervous, and that would be very, very understandable. Oh. Yeah, that's a good smash by Sukpon. Service over. One, four. Service over. Five, one. Oh, service fault call. called. Too high. Too high. Service over. Called on Choi. Two, five. Played by Tirara Ratsukun. Incidentally, five. his twin brother, Panit Chapon, is also in the Thomas Cup squad here this year. They've been playing a couple of tournaments together, twin brothers. Oh, yes. Big, big so gap there. Over. Can't afford yes. to hit up and stay at the net in men's doubles. Six, three. Arena really enjoying oh, that rally, and so six. they should. That's yeah, very, very well put oh. away by Tura Ratsukun. Mm. All got a little fast and furious. Block. Good rally. Oh, that's nice. Oh, missed opportunity from Sukpon. Well, it had been a wonderful shot earlier in the rally by Tira Ratsukun. The skill of the left hander. Quick, very quick. Back and forth. Next time, immediately. Eight, four. Nine, four. 
but I think the issue for the Thailand pair is that where are they going to win their points from? Because the defensive qualities of Ten, the two Koreans, well, Korean defense in men's doubles is world renowned anyway. And how do you break down that defense? Well, it's a major problem for an awful lot of pairs in World Babington against the Koreans. Well, the two 17-year-olds are going to do it, I don't know, but that's a very good sign there. I need to do it on a regular basis, though. Five, ten. So to the mid-game interval, in the and it is Choi and Kim who have the advantage. It's a five-point advantage at the mid-game interval of the opening game of this second men's doubles. Yeah. Little wayward with the backhand there. Sukpun. Just six minutes played. looking very solid in the early stages of this Four. men's doubles, the Korean pair. Well, it's a relatively six. new partnership. They formed their partnership at the Asian Men's Team Championships in Manila in 2020, and then didn't play together for a while. And of course, we then had the pandemic. a nice backhand kill from Tira Ratsukun. Oh, I like his skills. Typical left-hander. Nice racket skills. I don't know how left-handers manage to do it. They always seem to make it look so easy. one hole to play the forehand defence. Technically, it's much easier to play backhand defence. Oh, 
sensational. Eye in the back, defensive shot. Longest rally of the match so far, surely. Oh, brilliant. What timing on that Service from over. Choice or Ghoul. Look at that behind the back yes. from the left-hander. Quite brilliant. Uh, the timing on that final shot from Choi, exquisite. 14, A. 70 shots, clearly the longest rally of the match so far. by this young left-hander. Tira Ratsukun. Nine, fourteen. That's great awareness. It's not only the technical skills, which I've already told you I'm impressed with, it's also the tactical awareness. Return. Fifteen. Nine. Service over. Ten. Fifteen. Flick serve, but look at that follow up from Sukban. points of the deficit. Service over. Well, Sixteen thirteen. Those four straight points have put them right back in this opening game. Got to keep it tight from here, the young Thai pair. That's a great serve from Kim Won Ho. Inspired play by the 17 year olds. Would you 
them leave it. 15, 16. Six of the last seven points to the youngsters from Thailand. Oh, look at that defence. Oh, well, it's challenging. Challenges called out. If that's made the line, that is the shot of the match so far. Well, I doubt if they've ever played on a court with the challenge system. Yeah, that was clearly wide. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Service over. 17, 15. Play. Short. This is just extraordinary. So over. I've never seen these 17-year-olds before. Watched 16, a little bit of practice 17. the other day. But the Korean opponents are overwhelming favourites. And there's just one point in it. 16-17. Gone long. Yeah. Service over. Drift coming into play. 18, 16. Shuttle flying faster, getting towards the far end of the court as we look down during the rallies. So flying faster at the moment towards the Koreans. Rally. My goodness me, how the Koreans had to work and work 19, and work 16, yes. to get the shuttle on the floor. It's amazing. This time from Sukhon. Service over. 17, 19. Right towards that right hip. Perfect placement. Way to earn game point opportunities. 20, game point 
That's well long. Game. Opening game to Korea in the form of Choi So Gyul and Kim Won Ho. 21-17, they were made to work for it. And an appropriate scoreline against two 17-year-olds. Yes, clearly long, wasn't it? No question. Not even worth a challenge. So experience coming through in the end. Opening game lasting 21 minutes. เด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็ก
five, four. Play. Got the neck cord on the return of serve, so made over, control of the third five, shot very, very oh. difficult. Spring's gone. Uh, Seven, goodness, you could five. hear that, couldn't you, in choice racket? A most peculiar sound. Here it comes, that one. All right, so well. Tim Willis and the team, busy stringing all the rackets for all the players. There'll be another one there. Just cuts, snips out all the strings to relieve the tension evenly right across the racket head. And if you don't do that, the racket head, if you have your strings strung five. very tightly, the racket head can become a little bit contorted and therefore can crack. And that's why the players tend to just snip out the strings. straight points now for the Koreans and just to remind you the overall situation of the tie Korea are 2-1 up overall best of five so this is a must win for Thailand to send it to a, a fifth and final match to decide the outcome of course at group stage we play all five matches anyway This group A really is extremely strong. Indonesia, the defending champions, four time, 14 times winners. Korea themselves have been in two Thomas Cup finals, but not won it. Thailand has been in one final, but that was 61 years ago. And Singapore, and Singapore okay. have got the reigning world men's singles champion, Lo Ken okay. Yu, all in group A. So for the host Thailands, who play Indonesia Nine, tomorrow evening. This tie against Korea really is extremely important. Well, not to put any pressure on the 17-year-olds, but it is vital. Ten, five. Six straight points now for the Koreans. too soon as far as the Thailand pair are concerned. So this is with the next shot, super. And it means that Korea have the advantage at the mid-game interval, a five-point advantage. Considering they were four five down, seven of the last eight points ominous for the 17 year olds from Thailand. 
the advantage. Uh, well, trying to be a little too clever. Tira Ratsukun. the last 11 points I think you can safely say the momentum is with the Koreans okay. one-way traffic now 15 6 That's the second time a magnificently timed interception. An attempted lift, which is intercepted before it gets anywhere near the back of the court. Yeah. It's now a masterclass by Choi and Kim. There Seven, for the Super. Got the lucky net cord. again. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. call. Oh, the court attendants unaware Seven, that eighteen. really needed to come back on court. Play. So I think it's really just a question of whether they can make the scoreline a little more respectable. That's gone wide, not helping Service their course. Over Two points away, career from... 20 match points, winning seven. Winning the tie, one point away. Service over. Second match point opportunity now for Korea.
this time. 21-17, 21-9, the margin of the victory for Choi and Kim in the second men's doubles against the two 17-year-olds. But my goodness, by Korea, I think that the young Thai combination nine. are a very exciting prospect for the future. No doubt about that. But from 4-5 down in the second game, 14 of the next 15 points in favour of the Koreans and that passage of play really did the damage. So their confirmation, 21-17, 21-9 in a match lasting uh, 36 minutes. So 3-1, Korea lead in the tie, but we do play the fifth match and it's the third men's singles, Lee Young Gu for Korea up against Sitikong Tamasin for Thailand. Welcome back to the Impact Arena here in Nontabori, northern suburbs of Bangkok. This is a Group A Thomas Cup encounter and an unassailable lead for Korea. 3-1 they lead, but in all group matches we do play all five matches within the tie. And it is Lee Yung Gu for Korea up against Sitikom Tamasin for Thailand. Service. So first meeting between uh, these two Service. players. Have a good match. And that's not altogether surprising. Because this man plays the elite tier of tournaments on the world stage. The city of Tamasin. In fact, his major breakthrough was in 2019 when he won the Macau Super 300 event. He beat the number one seed, Chi Yu Chi, in the final. And then, of course, we had the pandemic and he wasn't able to progress that good form on to other tournaments. But he is a fine player. And his opponent, very inexperienced in world terms on the international stage. He's 24 years of age. He was born in Seoul. He's a tall athlete, as you can see, 183, uh, which is about six foot. He's uh, gone down in the world ranking seven places this week to 603. First Thomas Cup campaign, but he was selected for this Thomas Cup when his world ranking was 596. He was the 10th 
a men's singles player from Korea on the world ranking. His opponent, Sitikom Tamasin, turned 27 last month, born here in the Thai capital. And he is uh, just two centimetres uh, shorter than his opponent, five foot 11. He also has gone down in the world ranking, went down one place this week to 32, but has been as high as 21, a total of 10 weeks at 21 on the world ranking. Bert van Horenbeck of Belgium is our umpire for this one, and Eric de Roche from Canada, the service judge. Well, when I tell you that Li Yung Yu, when he was selected for this Thomas Cup campaign, had a win loss record of 19 and 15, having played 12 senior international tournaments, uh, but he had never progressed past the last 62 of any tournament he's played. So, to say that he's inexperienced in world terms is a bit of an understatement. Agustui Santoso, the singles coach in Thailand now. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Korea, represented by Yungyo Lee. And on my left, Thailand, represented by Sitikom Tamasin. Thailand to serve. Lovo. Play. So, Thailand in the form of Sitikom Tamasin, far side of the court, getting this fifth match of the tie underway. Oh, nice net shot. Yeah, nice play by Lee Yun Kyu. Serve, serve, one love. Well, as far as the Thai player is concerned, he's been in six international tournament finals in his career, winning five of them. So that's a very good record serve, in serve, finals uh, reached. One all. And as I was telling you, the biggest title that he's won was the Macau Super 300 of 2019. Oh, that's a lovely angle. It really is. Two, one. Leads moving the shuttle from side to side, making his opponent twist Three, and turn. Two. Never seen him play before. I know that he was promoted from the reserve list at the Korea Masters. Lost in the first round to Victor Svensson in three games. Vincent from Denmark. Oh, that 
That's delightful. Serve, serve, bro. Swayed the body Three, out of the four. way, giving himself the freedom to play the forehand defence. In fact, he'd gone past him. What a perfect block. has to be said that the Thailand team, especially the doubles, has been affected by the clash with the Southeast Asian Games at the moment. They're happening in Hanoi in Vietnam and their top doubles players have gone to participate in that event and that may cost them very dearly in this Thomas Cup campaign. I think they would have struggled against Korea anyway, in all honesty. That's a lovely block. Five, Just four. gave the backhand block a little bit of height. Get it down close to the net. Defensive shot blocked across court. Well, I think Six, he may four. think he's got to change his uh, positioning of his smash. I'd try and avoid hitting a power smash to that forehand side for the moment. I'd try and mix it up a little bit. Maybe more of an acute angle, steeper, a softer smash to the forehand side, or indeed go cross court. Or maybe even a body smash. Nice athletic play. Seven four. Five straight points now for Tamasin. Oh, that's well judged. Yeah, because the drift is left to right. That could have come back in, but it didn't. Seven straight points now to Citycom Thomasin. Oh, now there we go. Body Here's smash. Cameron. Much more effective. Five, nine. Nice change up. wide always oh, challenging no, I saw that as just out. wide I'm not sure he will have much joy with that challenge Yeah. 
thought it was a well called line judge. One challenge remaining. Serves over. 10 5. Play. Reserve six ten. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah, I like that Seven, from ten. Lee Young Yu. wasn't the best of clears from Tamasin. And it was still very well dispatched. Pace on that over. shot from Tamasin for the Korean to feed off on his defensive shot. That's a clever play from Citycom. So 11 7 the advantage at the mid game interval here. Because he's waiting, 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 also we have a chance to attack, attack something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarter one. Well, one. Only caught the end of that. Quarter one. Whatever you were saying there was definitely seconds. out of context. Oh, clever. Oh, that was going wide, I think. That's definitely wide. Well, seven. on that. Very loose neck shot. A little bit of trickery there from Citicon. Thomasin. Watch the double movement of the racket head here. Look at that. That's delightful. to work on Four, speed eight, to defensive eight. shots, I think, Lee Yung-Gyu. 
because he's late on to that, which makes it very, very difficult to play an accurate block to the net. And when you're sort of half diving and half falling towards the return shot, the opponents know that basically the only thing you can play is a block to the net, so they come forward with the follow-up. Got to try and stay on balance and be quicker on the defence. That's landed in. 15, eight. the sort of explosive movement that I was referring to in the second men singles that Wang Chalon doesn't seem to possess at the moment. Just wide. Always a tendency with the round the head Zero smash, over. your body movements going back in court and towards ten. the side of the court. Unless you've got really good racket head control, yeah. you tend to drag the smash wide of the sideline. That's why it's so important to be on balance when you play those overhead shots. Guys, again. Yeah. Well, demonstration in that rally on the art of disguising shots from City Com Thomason. Yeah. Lee left stranded on that reverse slice. Cross-court drop from the Thai player. Yeah. Not quick enough to react again. Lee. Point opportunities for Thomasin for Thailand. Yeah, there's the disguise again.
And again, he's toying with him. Now, opening game, 21-10 in favour of Citycom Damasin for Thailand. 21-10 confirms the umpire. Well, he was enjoying that towards the end of that game was uh, Thomasin very much in control and the opening game 21 10 in 18 minutes but in here also you have a drop and clear when you need to change the speed you know? You, you, now you, in here also, can, you can control it. Uh, drop and clear or something here. ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ、ボッポ
Uh, it's a couple of times when there's been no power on the attacking shot. It's all been about angle. Lee has really struggled to generate the enough power on his defensive shot to actually get it over. As he just likes to feed off opponent's power. Struggles more when he has to impart his own. Oh, came off the frame. Yeah. Super angle. Don't think it was particularly deep lift. Let's look where Thomason's feet are. Yep, he's Five, inside the double two. service line, which means that the lift was short. Yeah, because he's behind the shot. Oh, it would have landed on the inside back line, double service line. Again, the lift was short. Six, Again, Thomason's feet, I think, were inside the double service line. Yep, indeed they were. That's a better lift, yeah. Oh, far more difficult for Citycom to play the at attacking shot. Oh, it's a nice net shot, wasn't it? Another one short. Yeah. Seven, four. And it's all been set up with the good spinning net shots from this man at the front of the court, forcing the short lifts. but I think he was right to go for it because quite frankly unless he tries to take more chances and get on the attack I can't see a way through for Lee Young Yu yeah it's a pity I think he's trying to do the right thing he's trying to take initiative take on Indonesia, the defending champions. And obviously now they've lost this tie to Korea, it will be 
I think, make or break for the host, Thailand. Just speed of reaction to Ten, defensive five. shots out wide to his wings. Speed of reaction in general on his defence, I think, needs improving. It's a tough situation for Lee, I have to say. Very little international experience, and you're asked to play the fifth match in the Thomas Cup ties. It's a lot of pressure. Deep in that rally. Service over. Six ten. Yeah, that's nice defence. Uh, couldn't cope with the second 11, one. 6, the and it is a five-point advantage for Sitcom Thomason here in the second game, having already won the first. That's a nice angle. Having changed direction. Moving forward, had to stop, leap backwards, and plays the winner off it. So has Lee Young-Yu got any other ideas to throw into this match? He knows that his team, Korea, have already won the tie. Serves over, 7-11. Oh, nice net shot. That's much better play from Lee. Look, he's trying to command the rallies more. Ah. As soon as there was a loose clear. Or a clear that was giving his opponent enough time, 12, you see. Thomason read the clear. He was moving, got behind it. Thank you. Once you've got your opponent under pressure, you really need to keep them under pressure. And that was a bit of a gift, that clear. That's a lovely punch clear. What a difference. Missed it. Now, what a difference between those two rallies. 
with a clear to the same position in court from this man, Lee. One was far too loopy. And not enough pressure. The one in the last rally was superb. That's a bit loopy. Missed it. Same as there, Brett. 13, 8. I like the fact that this man is trying to do the right thing now. Maybe a little bit nervous at the start of the match. That would be understandable. Fourteen eight. Problems on the defence again. Well, that goes down as an unforced Nine, error in my book. 14. Oh, and there's a little bit of a slip there as he tried to move. Legal new. Service over. 15, 9. Oh, was it a stumble? Either way, it made him a little off balance. Yeah, it was just prior to that. Good smash, though, from Citycom. Simply has to improve his defence if he wants to make an impact on the world stage, this young man from Korea. Two points Nine, away eight, from victory. Citicom Thomasin. Perfection. Got the net cords. And that little bit of luck means nine. that it's match point opportunities for Sitcom Thomasin. Thank yeah. you. Beautiful.
So six straight points. Can he make it seven? Game. Yes, he can. 21-10, 21-9. The margin of the victory for Match City Com Thomason. 21-10. 21-9. Umpire just confirming that scoreline from 14-9. Seven straight points to close out the match. 21-9. Nice little net exchange in the end. 38 minutes in duration for the match. So uh, a very convincing performance by Citicom Thomason. Two straight games over a Lee of Korea. So that concludes this Group A tie on day one of competition here in Bangkok. One by Korea, 3-2 in the end. It all started so well for the hosts with Kunlawut Widasan. Uh, winning in two straight games against the Olympic quarter-finalist Ho Kwon Hee. We always knew that Korea men's doubles uh, were uh, very strong indeed, and it was pretty convincing in the first men's doubles, wasn't it, for Kang and Saw. Then uh, the second men's singles, this really was the crunch match of the tie. And I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed in Guntapong Wang Chalong, the 2019 World Championship bronze medalist. He seemed off the pace uh, against uh, Jiun Hyuk Jin of Korea, but all credit to the Korean winning in two straight. Second men's doubles, well, as predicted, Choi and Kim too good for the two 17-year-olds, but uh, lovely to see the youngsters playing so well on the big stage. And uh, Thailand in the fifth match of the Thai City Com uh, Tamasin, uh, really overwhelming uh, Lee Yun Yu uh, to make it 3-2 in the end. A career will play Indonesia tomorrow night. It will be a must-win situation for them. But, of course, we have two sessions tomorrow morning, which starts here on court number one, 9 a.m., with uh, China, uh, the 10-time winners against France in the Thomas Cup. And then at 2 p.m., it's Uber Cup with Thailand, beaten finalists four years ago in this very arena. They play Mal Malaysia in Group C. And then, as I was telling you, at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, it's back to Thomas Cup and the defending champions, Indonesia against Thailand. Do join us for all the action tomorrow. But in the meantime, from all of us here, especially from me, Jill Clark, bye for now.